fast is water consumption growing in America? Is the nation faced with a serious shortage? What is industry doing to meet the water crisis? Industry on Parade, Peabody Award winner for public service produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. California's San Joaquin Valley. Without irrigation, its rich farms would lie buried in dust. Its people would vanish. For all life depends on water, which the average American uses at the rate of 60 gallons a day, not only to quench thirst and to support the health of the body, but in dozens of other ways, to keep grass green, to keep kids clean and happy. Today, America's standard of living calls for 12 times the amount of water primitive peoples require. Water is our basic ammunition against fire. And water is the basic ingredient of many of our most popular forms of recreation. Yet the growing recreational uses of water and increasing household uses paired with the tremendous quantities on which the nation's industrial development depends. It was on waterways that settlers and the nation's commerce first moved inland from coastal colonies. And today, waterways still make possible efficient transportation of factory products at exceptionally low cost. The use of water in manufacturing has increased some 40% in the past generation. Water performs countless tasks in factories, mines, and mills, making possible, for example, the chemical reactions that purify low-grade copper ore, as in this operation. Cooling is the biggest industrial use for water, while one of the most familiar is spray painting. The waterfall catches and carries off the overspray. Another major use of water the generation of electric power. Like the individual then, America's unsurpassed industrial economy could not exist without water, our most vital natural resource. The supply might seem to be endless. From the oceans of the world, the sun evaporates and lifts into the skies about 80,000 cubic miles of water each year, moving more than one-fourth of it over the land surfaces of the continents onto which it falls as rain or snow. In total volume, this unending circulation is constant, but in other respects, it is quite unreliable, since nature is fickle in her selection of time and place and in the quantities she releases from the clouds. The history of man is filled with droughts and floods which have killed millions and forced mass migrations. As a result, we have had to learn how to control the flow of water as it rushes down and back to the sea again, completing its cycle. We have had to learn how to manage it, to make the most of it. This is a report on such measures, on water conservation in which industry, a leading user, plays a leading role, helping us utilize to the full extent a natural resource that has influenced most profoundly the shape of civilization. extremes of the water problem are illustrated simultaneously in a semi-desert area of our own southwest. On the one hand, it shows the effects of drought, earth that lies barren because it holds no water. On the other hand, it contributes to floods. Because the land refuses to absorb what little rain does fall, the water will run along the surface, picking up flood characteristics. The test shows the soil to have virtually no ability to absorb moisture. But industry shows one way to help correct the situation with a device which punches holes in the hard pan surface. Come the next rain, thousands of tons of water will be absorbed quickly. Here in western Oregon, rainfall is much heavier, but there's still a problem. So, experts are called from a local power company in this case, the visitors are employed by a firm that believes its obligation to the community 
goes far beyond its basic function of supplying electric power. The experts know that the problem here is a bunching of rain, too much at the wrong times, not enough at others. And they're skilled at correcting the situation through carefully planned storage and irrigation systems. After terrain is studied and soil analyzed, distances over which pipes will have to be laid are carefully measured off. The water plan for this farm centers on a stream that runs through the property. The completed project includes a dam, carefully planned to capture and store just the amount of water needed. Heavy rainfall, once lost in runoff, will be held back now, saved for use when skies are cloudless. A pump will lift the water up an incline to field level. Result? Increased farm prosperity, better living for the whole community through water conservation. This dam and others displayed in a model are among many constructed by Southern California Edison Company to make use of the same water over and over again. The series of dams and powerhouses starts high in the mountains, converting the falling water into power at various stages as it falls, and finally releasing it to irrigate the valley below. Also in California, the Laguna Municipal Reservoir is lined with waterproof asphalt as a conservation measure. The lining consists of reinforced molded asphalt panels cut to lengths which can range from 5 to 15 feet. The panels are eased up the sloping walls by a winch and sealed in place with a special adhesive that forms a permanent bond, thus blocking seepage which sometimes accounts for the loss of as much as two-thirds of the volume of water in storage or in transit. Here, the mastic adhesive is applied. Finally, firm contact is ensured by a short stroll up the wall and the job is finished. In a storage system that also keeps the water covered, to prevent evaporation and thus further ensure that waste is held to an absolute minimum. A chemical covering to retard evaporation is the technique being employed in this experiment at the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio. It's one of 150 chemicals the experts here have tested on water surfaces ranging in area up to hundreds of acres. After taking careful readings of humidity, wind velocity, and other conditions that might affect their experiments, they have found that a substance known as hexadecanol can help reduce evaporation by 18%, a saving of enormous importance. The organic compound is completely harmless and has the ability to spread quickly over the water surface in the form of a protective film just one molecule thick. With distribution easily accomplished by means of floating, chemical-filled cylinders or rafts, another victory in the fight to conserve water. And here's the story of still another skirmish won by industrial ingenuity. At a New Jersey frozen food processing plant that uses more than 10 million gallons of water every day, this water, when it becomes waste, is far from being poisonous. But because of the bits of food and other matter it contains, it cannot be dumped into public streams. So the problem is how to make it pure again. And the solution in this case is simply by pumping it back into the earth from which it came. For the purpose, the company turned its attention to a nearby woods and found that there the water is soaked up as fast as it's pumped in, millions of gallons a day, and still the forest drinks it up like a blotter causing it to filter down 200 feet through layers of sand and gravel before emerging finally by way of springs as clear, pure water, ready once again to serve the entire community. The ability of trees to draw water deep into the ground and to hold it there means a close relationship, of course, between water conservation and the conservation of our forests. 
The renewing of the one always tends to help renew the other, so that the planting of trees plays an important part in the increase of our underground water supply. Mass reforestation, sponsored here in Wisconsin by power and paper companies, and in many other parts of the country by industries of various kinds, is among the most practical of the many programs geared to our increasing need for water. A fortunate side effect, of course, is the continuation of the perpetual harvest of trees. In its operations, the pulp and paper industry is a big user of water, but in research projects like those in progress here at the Institute of Paper Chemistry in Appleton, Wisconsin, the pulp and paper manufacturers push on toward even greater accomplishments in water conservation than those already achieved. The industry spends more than $10 million annually in construction of new facilities for purification and conservation of water, and expenditure over and above the cost of operating and maintaining existing purification facilities. Three-fourths of the water it uses is recirculated and reused. That means pulp and paper mills without such investment would require four times as much water as they do at present. Not so practical now, but holding perhaps the greatest promise of all for the future is industry's many-sided search for ways to purify salt water economically. Membranes alternately charged with negative and positive electricity are the basis of one approach. When water is passed through the membranes here at Ionics Incorporated, the salt is drawn off, leaving a purified liquid. This principle already is being used to purify brackish water sufficiently for irrigation and even for drinking. And as quantity production of these devices reduces costs, as demand for pure water increases still further, we may all eventually be watering our crops and drinking pure water taken directly from the sea without waiting for nature to purify it, freeing us from nature's whims about the best time and place for distribution. Efficient industrial use and reuse of water now available, together with the continuing search for new supplies, help bring crops to land once considered marginal or even useless. But our growing population with its increasingly higher living standards means more and more need for water, and thus for greater water conservation, in which industry leads the way. American Erie, builder of a better tomorrow, has presented Industry on Parade, a service of the National Association of Manufacturers.